technology. This unit introduces you to the installation of industrial thermometers into the... We will now cover the following other tasks and various functions of temperature transmitters. First of all, let's take a look at the installation of thermometers in pipelines, and then familiarize ourselves with the special considerations when installing in steam pipelines. We will then discuss the installation of thermometers in tanks and in flue gas lines. Finally, we will take a look at the different temperature transmitters and learn more about the tasks and various functions of temperature transmitters. To finish up, we will then once again briefly summarize the subject matter discussed in the last three units. For measuring the temperature in pipelines, supports are welded in to hold the thermometer. In order to properly record the temperature of the medium as it goes through the sensor, there are a few principal things that we must take into account during installation. The insertion length can have an effect on the measuring accuracy of the sensors. If the insertion length is too short, errors can occur due to the low temperatures of the process medium near the wall and due to the heat transfer via the process connection. To rule out these sources of error, the insertion length, L, should be, when possible, long enough for the sensor tip to reach the middle line of the pipe for pipes with small diameters. Otherwise, the insertion length, L, should be greater or at least equal to half of the pipe diameter, D2, plus the length of the installation support. In all cases, the insertion length must be at least eight times the diameter of the sensor plus the length of the installation support. In addition, installation diagonally against the direction of flow or in a corner piece is preferred, as the flow into the sensor is then advantageous. For larger pipe diameters, vertical installation is possible, but ensure that flow-induced vortices do not cause the thermo well to vibrate in its Thermometer assemblies in steam pipelines are exposed to particularly high loads. Water that gets carried along and the formation of condensation lead to sudden changes in the load situation. That is why the fittings for steam applications are deep hole drilled, exclusively from bar stock and conically shaped. In the case of thin-walled pipes, a connection piece is first added and the thermo well is then welded into it. The fitting is directly welded into thick-walled pipes, wall thickness greater than 35 mm. Thermometer assemblies can be installed in tanks either from the side or from above. Installation from above is advantageous in that there is no need to drill a hole through the tank wall below the liquid level. However, you must ensure that the sensor is properly immersed in the medium to be measured. To ensure this, sometimes insertion lengths must be extremely long. This is not always possible from a design point of view and can be very expensive. Also, watch for stirring devices and tank built-ins in reactors and larger tanks. Internally coated tanks are generally only equipped with Gas-tight threaded sleeves are used to install thermometers in flue gas channels. The thermal well can be made of heat-resistant steel. And As we've already seen, it's necessary to have a lot of information about the medium to be measured, the process itself, and the basic conditions of measurement in order to properly design a temperature measuring point. Temperature. Properties of the medium flow and pressure patterns, and vibration, the desired response time, as well as other process requirements, largely determine the selection of the suitable design and materials. Temperature transmitters. In practice, various types of temperature transmitters are used. The following section will give us an overview of the common types of temperature transmitters, and we will take a closer look at their functions. DIN rail converters are generally used for installation in control cabinets. 
These transmitters latch onto the rail and generally have the same hardware as the field transmitters. When installing in the connection head or in field housing, so-called head-mounted transmitters are used. These round transmitters have a hole in the middle through which the thermo wires or connecting lines are fed and attached to the top of the transmitter. The external diameter and the diameter of the hole are standard for the compact form of the head-mounted transmitter, but there are differences in the overall height. These transmitters can thus be easily installed in most commercially available connection heads. The main task of the transmitter is to convert the small sensitive sensor signal into a stable analog or digital signal that can be processed by the control system. Ideally, there is a linear correlation between the temperature and the signal output in the temperature sensors. Practically, however, this is not the case, and the sensors show more or less systematic deviations from linearity. Advanced transmitters can compensate for these errors through the linearization of the thermometer signal using a standardized characteristic curve. Within a certain temperature range, a two-point adjustment can be carried out by setting up zero and span so as to further improve linearity and accuracy. The highest accuracy over the whole temperature range can be achieved by an individual correction curve that can be stored in most programmable transmitters. In process technology, the type of transmitter used depends on the application. For simple standard applications, it's often reasonably priced analog transmitters with limited setting options that are used. The measurement is converted into a simple milliampere or millivolt signal. PC programmable transmitters feature advanced functions and can compensate for the non-linearities of the sensor elements. To do this, the calibration data of the sensor can be input into the transmitter using a PC. Signal output is generally analog. Hard transmitters with 4 to 20 milliampere output can be programmed via the current loop using, for example, the control system, or alternatively a so-called heart communicator or heart modem, respectively. The measuring signal can also be converted into a digital output signal. Field bus transmitters output the measurement digitally as a profibus signal or foundation field bus signal. These transmitters can only be programmed using the control system. Heart transmitters are transmitters from the first digital field bus generation. They've proven themselves over decades and installation is easy with comparatively simple means. The digital communication is modulated to the analog 4 to 20 milliampere signal, allowing additional information such as diagnostic values to be transferred. In addition, the configuration and setting of the transmitter is possible via this transfer channel. Using a heart transmitter, it is normally possible to bridge distances of up to 1,500 meters between the transmitter and the control. Profibus and Foundation Field Bus transmitters are the latest generation of field communication. Using a network, a number of transmitters in X and non-X segments can be coupled with the control system. Signal transmission is exclusively digital, and a number of parameters can be read out of the transmitter. The transmitters are programmed using the process control system. Compared to the classic wiring of analog sensors, the wiring expense is considerably reduced with field. If temperature transmitters are used that are not galvanically isolated, a ground loop can be created as shown here in orange. This is primarily the case with thermocouples grounded on the measuring tip. An additional current flows, shown as IERR in the figure, creating a loss of voltage in the measuring circuit and resulting in a measuring error. The problem of the ground loop is easy and effectively solved by using a galvanically isolated transmitter. This cuts through the ground loop and provides this principle is also easily applied to resistance thermometers in two, three, and four wire connections. The galvanically isolated transmitter interrupts any possible ground loop 
and prevents distortion of measuring results. Occasionally occurring surges in plants can destroy temperature transmitters and any equipment connected to them. It is thus a very good idea to use an isolated transmitter that guarantees sufficient surge protection. All of the subsequently connected devices are then better protected from damage caused by electrical surges. Some transmitters for resistance thermometers also feature noise suppression for the input signal. Unwanted interference signals such as common mode noise can be effectively suppressed, preventing any transfer to the output signal. There is a function for thermocouples that is comparable to the noise suppression function for resistance thermometers. Noise suppression is especially useful in the case of grounded measuring inserts, as otherwise incorrect measures. In this unit, we learned about the three types of instrumentation for thermometer measuring points. The head mounted transmitter enjoys widespread use in Europe and is used in measuring points minimally affected by temperature and vibration loads. Comparatively speaking, it is the most cost-effective type of instrumentation and converts the sensitive sensor signal into a stable measuring signal in close proximity to the sensor. The field transmitter is found mainly in the American instrumentation sector. It is also the preferred type of instrumentation for measuring points exposed to high temperatures and strong vibrations. The rail-mounted transmitter is also used for instrumentation located away from the sensor and boasts similar advantages to the field transmitter when it comes to vibrations and high temperatures. When looking at a transmitter located away from the sensor, it is important to keep in mind that thermocouples must be connected to the transmitter using compensation cables and not copper wire. We've become familiar with the different designs and materials used for thermometer assemblies. During the selection process, the definition of the correct thermometer assembly garners much attention while taking into account the different mechanical and chemical loads. Selection is made according to the individual requirements of the application and the expected load. It is preferable to use appropriate standard fittings according to DIN, for which there is already a strength calculation. An incorrect selection can lead to a break or failure of the thermometer assembly, and the medium to be measured could leak out into the environment. The transmitter's task is to convert the nonlinear sensor signal into a linear output signal. The output signal can then be transferred to the control system as an analog or digital signal, depending on the type of transmitter. High quality transmitters are galvanically isolated and thus eliminate measuring errors which may crop up due to ground loops. In addition, high-quality transmitters protect the electronics from electrical surges and signal noise. Congratulations! You're now in a position to design simple measuring points yourself, and to completely design the basic layout for more complex... Now let's briefly summarize once more the content of this unit, and the previous three units, Basics of Temperature Measuring Technology. You now know the basic setup of a temperature measuring point and are familiar with the design of an industrial thermometer. We have discussed the use of thermometer assemblies as well as the basics of their design and their limitations of use. You know how to install industrial thermometers in the process and have become familiar with the different types of temperature transmitters, their tasks and functionalities.